Hello and welcome to the Scholar Progenium. Today we're going to be talking about an interesting topic. We're going to be looking at a comparison of the Vanguard veterans and the Sanguinary Guard as an elite choice for our Blood Angels armies. Now, both units are extremely viable. This one, the jury's really out on it. It's a difficult one to make up my mind on. Now, I have got a personal preference, of course, but um, I'm going to put any biases aside and I'm just going to talk about the two units, the loadouts that we want to take and how they're going to perform on the battlefield. And this is important, you know, obviously you've got to invest your hard-earned cash in these units, in these models, you've got to invest your points in your lists in these models um, and if you want a hard-hitting army you're going to have at least a couple of units of these guys in a list. So we're going to look at the competitive loadout for Vanguard veterans and we're going to see if they're the best choice for our elites as Blood Angels, or do the Sanguinary Guard reign supreme still? So, um, who are the Vanguard veterans, first of all? Let's have a look at that. So, the Vanguard veterans are essentially members of the first company of a Blood Angels Space Marine chapter. Now, they are members of the first company, but they are specialised in close combat and are ideally suited to spearhead any offensive action. Now, uh, while every member of the chapter's first company is proficient in all manners of weaponry, those of the vanguard squads have completely immersed themselves in the art of close quarter fighting. Having served for lengthy rotations among their chapter's assault squads, vanguard veterans are some of the best hand-to-hand -hand fighters in the chapter. And if you're one of the best hand-to-hand -hand fighters in the Blood Angels chapter, you're good in hand-to-hand -hand combat. You know, that goes without saying. So, the Vanguard veterans, they are elite members of the First Company, but not members of the Angels host. The Sanguinary Guard are the select few chosen traditionally to as bodyguard to the chapter master, originally Sanguinius. Um, and these guys have the best armour and the best gear in the lore that the Blood Angels chapter has to offer with their gleaming golden armour and their broad pinions on their jetpacks as they leap into battle with their and carmine axes and blades and their angelus bolt guns attached to their wrists. Now, the you know, both units, they're really cool. And I've got to say, I've been uh, playing against a lot of Vanguard veterans recently um, because I'm currently practicing for a tournament um, I'm on a team and one of my opponents is running a extremely hardcore White Scars list and he's got I think 25 Vanguard veterans with Lightning Claws and Storm Shields and these guys are super cool. Not only do they look great and he's got his kitted out with a fancy Raven Guard Forge World jetpacks that he's kind of customised a little bit and this that and the other to make them look really cool and he has run these guys as Blood Angels but he's settled on white scars. Uh, he's got them painted purple so he can run them however he likes. Now, these guys, they're ruthless and I've got to know them really well in term, on the competitive sort of layout, format one might say. So I feel now I'm sort of in a good position to pass on that information, that experience to you guys um, so you can make use of it of course and start kicking butt so first things first i'd say you know vanguard veterans they're an absolutely amazing unit you know i'm really envious of this i've got like 20 in a box but they're not loaded out with storm shield and lightning claw um and i am in the process of getting hold of lots of storm shields and customizing these guys and getting them ready so that i can run a really nasty competitive flesh terrorist list that's my dream i'm going to run them with storm shields and chainsaws instead of lightning claws, just for the fun of it, uh, in a fun flash terrors list. Uh, I've got other plans for my Blood Angels. Um, I'm going down the Sanguinary Guard route, but that's my personal preference. I'm building an extra unit uh, of nine Sanguinary Guard at the moment. Um, they're my personal preference. That doesn't actually... Um, I made that decision before really getting to grips with the Vanguard veterans are, uh, on the tabletop in real terms instead of theorycraft. Um, or watching other people do it on you know bat battle reports and that kind of thing. Um, so I'd made that decision anyway. That doesn't affect what I'm going to tell you today. So Vanguard veterans are amazing. Sanguinary Guard are amazing. So we need to get down 
to the detail. So what do the stat lines look like? Well, they're very comparative. You're going to take your Vanguard veterans with jump packs probably, almost definitely, especially as a Blood Angels. So they're both moving the same distance, 12 inches. And this is really useful, of course. You can reposition. You can put your hard-hitting units where you need to on the battlefield. You can start your Vanguard veterans on the field. You can start your Sandguard on the field if you want. You don't have to necessarily deep strike them in. If you've got a lot of them, you can position where you want, run forward, and get into combat, often in the first turn if you if you go second. As the opponent you know moves forward to take objectives and that kind of thing, they'll move into your range. Um, so... Both units are moving really fast, um, they're both the same strength, 4, toughness 4, um, they've both got 2 wounds, um, they're both weapon skill uh, 3 and ballistic skill 3, and not that you really care about the ballistic skill that much, especially on the Vanguard veterans, um, and the, they're, so they're, they're comparative across the board. Now the Van, Van, Vanguard veterans only have 2 attacks on their stat line. And the Blood Angels Sanguinary Guard have three attacks base. The Vanguard Veteran Sergeant actually gets an extra attack. He gets three attacks. And the Sanguinary Guard, they're all equal brothers. Uh, and so there is no Sergeant in that unit. Um, so for that reason, um, you don't get an extra attack in the unit, which is uncommon across 40k, to be honest. Now, uh, not, not a massive disadvantage, but something I thought I'd mention. However, with the loadout that we're going to talk about, Storm Shields and Lightning Claws, which are really, if you're going to get hold of Vanguard veterans, you know, for the next, whilst the current codex is as it is with the current meta, Lightning Claws and Storm Shields are the way you want to go. Um, obviously, Vanguard veterans, a massive benefit of them is that they have um, a huge variety of loadouts that you can take and customise them with, with, and you can trim points off them to save points across the list, whereas Sanguinary Guard are quite set. Uh, in their options for loadouts. So the Vanguard veterans do have a lot of flexibility, but today we're talking about Storm Shield and Lightning Claws. Um, now, the Sandguard also have a 2-up save compared to the Vanguard veteran 3-up save, but again, with a Storm Shield, you're going to get a plus 1 to your armour, so they're comparable 2-up save. So, and with the Lightning Claw, you're getting an extra attack base, so 3 attacks. So they are just even across the board. They've got that 2-up save, They've got three attacks base, four on the charge, or if they're charged, really, really good. Let me just have a sip of beer. Now, in terms of points, the Vanguard veterans do come out on top slightly. They are four points cheaper per model in this competitive build. So, even after you've paid for the Lightning Claw, the Storm Shield, and the Jetpack, they only come out of 26 points compared to the Sanguinary Guard's 30. Now, um, this doesn't seem like much of a difference. But if you're taking two or three units and you're spamming these in a competitive list, then that's going to add up to over 90 points or over 100 points even, which is essentially if you're taking a Vanguard and a platoon um, detachment, uh, that's paying for your troops. So that's your troop tax paid for in that saving. So it does add up in a list overall uh, if you were to go lean into one unit entirely. But it's not that many points and... They are very comparable in the stat line, and the Sanguinary Guards do have a few advantages. Now, let's have a look at the loadouts that we're talking about. So the Lightning, the Storm Shield obviously gives you plus one to your armor save, bringing them into line with the Sanguinary Guard, and it also gives a four-up invent, something the Sanguinary Guard would love to have. Now, when you're in combat, often the worst you're going to face is AP-3, but if you're facing AP-3 power sword wielding marines, in the Assault Doctrine, that's AP-4. That's going to take the Sanguinary Guard all the way to a 6-up save. And even against AP-3, that's a 5-up save. The Vanguard Veterans are never below that 4-up save because of that invent. Now, a lot of the time, they're just going to be comparable. You're not. It depends who you're attacking, and you're going to attack almost anything with both of these units. But the... Um, the you know, the Vanguard Veterans are always going to have that little bit of insurance that little bit of reliability you don't have to worry sometimes you're sending your sanguinary guard into something nasty and you think oh you know i could lose some serious models here this could put me on the back foot whereas the Sang vanguard veterans you know very predictably what casualties you're probably going to suffer when you get involved with any combat against any unit which is a really good that's a massive boon for the vanguard veterans absolutely huge 
Now, there is a um, caveat to this, which is that the Vanguard veterans, yes, you can get them involved in any fight, but they're less um, capable of damage output. That is just the way it is. Yes, they have uh, the same amount of attacks, and yes, they have re-rolls to wounds, which is great, but they're strength user, which means they're strength four. And Sanguinary Guard, depending on whether you take axes uh, or um, swords or even power fists, which a lot of people have modelled because that used to be the best uh, in the old meta, so a lot of people are still running that, um, you, you're running on a much higher strength and you're wounding almost any infantry on twos because you've got, you're going to be prob most infantry are no higher than strength, toughness four, toughness five at the absolute most, and you're going to be usually over toughness, over toughness, over strength four, sorry, because your swords are plus one strength, your axes are plus two strength. So, because of the blood angels, obviously plus one to wound, you're going to be wounding almost anything on twos. The Vanguard veterans are going to wound almost anything on threes with a re-roll to wound all the time. Now that is really, really nice, and that keeps that that pushes them probably with more reliability to a slightly higher amount of wounds that the opponents having to take. But it's only one damage a pop and the sanguinary guard they're doing a flat two damage which is really really tasty the sanguinary guard also are going to have if you've got swords in there or fists an additional ap so they're going to be cutting through armor more reliably um, and so if you're not going against invun uh, sort of other vanguard veterans or invulnerable wielding um, units you're going to be doing real damage that the Vanguard veterans could only hope to achieve. Um, the Vanguard veterans do really well against other super resilient units where you just have to go into that battle of attrition. But the Sanguinary Guard, when they can take that opportunity, when they can hit something that doesn't have an invulnerable save, that extra damage and that extra AP is just going to cleave through it and you're going to do the job every single time. The Vanguard veterans sometimes have to grind it out. Now they have that 4-up invum, which lets them do that, the Sanguinary don't have the inven that's what keeps them balanced if they had an inven they'd be broken obviously so they go in and they have to finish the job quickly with that high damage output and get on to the next unit without taking too much in return so we're looking at survivability versus high damage output we're looking at battle of attrition versus get in there boom and zoom so two slightly different ways of playing and that's why I'm saying, you know, one's not better than the other here. The jury really is out. I have a personal preference. I like the Sanguinary Guard. I'm going to tell you why now, tactically. So, from a tactical perspective, for me, the Sanguinary Guard have access to all of the same stratagems that the Vanguard veterans can do. So they can do the mortal wounds. When you roll a dice, you have to beat the opponent's toughness. One dice for it. It's one CP. You roll a dice for every model in the unit. If you beat the opponent the unit's toughness that you're charging into you do a mortal wound really nice very reliable but both units can do that whereas the sand guard have um the uh, a stratagem that allows them to uh i forget what it is right now but they have a, a stratagem that is specific to the sanguinary guard not only this but they have a couple of special abilities that the vanguard veterans just don't have so First of all, they've got their death masks, and their death masks mean that in melee, which is where these units are going to be, they are always going to be um, minus one to hit, which is absolutely brilliant and you know really, really good. So a big boon for the Sanguinary Guard. On top of that, if they're within six inches of the Warlord, which a lot of the time they're going to be, and it's really easy to set up as a, as a sort of um, situational buff you know you're going to get that off if you want to it's not too situational it's a it's a you know it's a uh, plus one for them to hit but that means they're hitting on twos with a reroll probably because your warlords are probably going to be giving them rerolls in some way whether they're a chaplain giving reroll to hits because of a litany or whether it's captain or chapter master whatever that means you're probably hitting on twos re-rolling ones with the sand guard which is a blistering amount of hits yeah you don't have the re-roll to wound but you're getting almost all your hits through almost every time the vanguard veterans if they're next to the warlord they're still going to be re-rolling their ones probably or possibly re-rolling 
um, everything, if, say, it's a, a chaplain doing a listening that gives re-rolls in, in close combat, but they're only hitting on threes and they're not getting a buff to that. So that is just less attacks going through. So you've got less attacks going through. Yes, you've got rerolls to wounds, which means the pool of attacks that you get are going to more reliably go through on the wounds, but you're going to be wounding on less because you're going to have less strength, so you're only wounding on threes. So again, less wounds, rerolling, but less. And then those that get through and aren't saved, yes, you're AP minus two, which is good, um, and generally comparable. I think I went a bit overboard when I was saying that uh, you know, swords and axes were going to always be better AP, but I think I probably laboured that point a little too much. But, you know, long story short, the opponent's probably going to save a few more of the Vanguard veterans, and then that pool of dice, even if it's comparable, um, is one damage each instead of two damage from the same guard. So, for me, those extra buffs that the host of angels get, that the sanguinary guard amazing as they are get just that makes them a preferable unit to me from a tactical perspective um you know i love the vanguard veterans i've been playing against them i'm really envious of them i'm definitely converting mine to do the same and i'm definitely going to be running them in my army lists um but for me it's just the sanguinary guard that that invun is amazing i'm not getting it wrong and it is such a big boon a four pin fun is incredible and the, the fact that you're just never taking too many casualties from the Vanguard veterans compared to the Sand Guard where stuff can go tits up and you can end up losing a whole squad really nastily from some bad saves. You know, that, that four-up invent is absolutely incredible. But my sort of final tactical perspective on this is that as a Blood Angel, we want to maintain momentum at all times. We drop down or we move up on objectives and we roll through them, we remove everything in that zone, in that area of the battlefield, and we crack on, we take control of that, move on to the next zone, and we're just always rolling, we've got to keep the ball rolling, we've got to keep momentum at all times with our armies. So for me, although the Vanguard veterans are certainly more reliable, the Sand Guards just play more into my playstyle. And I've been playing a lot more conservatively as I've got further into 9th edition and got more experience. You know, it's not like 8th edition where you can just run out in the first and second turn. You've got to take your time with these things. Um, but when you do punch, you need to keep the ball rolling. And the Sanguinary Guard just lean into that playstyle a bit more. And again, that's why they're my personal preference. So both units are an absolute 10 out of 10. But for one point more a model... Minus one to hit in melee always, um, plus one uh, and uh, minus, uh, plus one to hit near the warlord, and that two damage that just makes the difference. That combines together to be worth more than a four pin fun for my in my eyes. And then on top of that, you have the fact that the Vanguard veterans they're not shooting anything. Maybe they can chuck a grenade, but they're not shooting any guns. Your Angelus bolt guns can actually wreak havoc, spe havoc especially in turn two when they're on two shots, AP minus two, out to 18 inch range. That's absolutely great. Really, really powerful. And you can often clean out screens and then charge into the meaty stuff behind with a re-roll, with a, you know, a relic that gives you re-roll, with a litany that gives you plus two to charge instead of plus one, with your just basic plus one. Um, you know, you can set up really nice, you know, uh, attacks where... You clean the screen with the Sanguinary Guard and then you charge in anyway or charge a unit nearby. You know, the Vanguard veterans just can't do that. If they deep strike in, if there's a screen there, they have to take care of the screen first. Yeah, they'll go through it and no problem. But that's, again, slowed down your momentum. It's slowed down the pace of the battle. And with the Blood Angels, you just want to be slamming through, smash, smash, smash all the time. So, again, for me, the Vanguard veterans... Although they are one point cheaper, although they are super reliable on their wounds, although they are, you know, just an absolutely fantastic unit, hands down, no doubt about it, and one that I'm investing in myself currently, for me, it's got to be the Sanguinary Guard. Maybe I'm biased, maybe it's my love of the Blood Angels for a long time, but it's Sanguinary Guard all the way. And that's why soon in the battle reports that'll be posting, you'll be seeing more Sanguinary Guard and, you know, more Vanguard veterans to come soon as well. 
Um, so I hope you found this video interesting. Um, I hope you found it entertaining. This has been the Scholar Progenium. Thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.